Is there an easier way to heal from narcissistic abuse besides what I tell you you have to do on this channel? Do I really have to do the one thing to heal? Hi, this is Mike, and this is the one thing that heals BPD and NPD abuse channel. Bear in mind, the name of this channel is the most important thing about it. There is one thing that you can do which will magically and completely, totally, permanently heal you from the damage, the trauma, the ongoing pain that you suffer as a result of being in a romantic relationship with a borderline or a narcissist. And I mean, I don't know how much simpler I can make it than just do this one thing. If you do this one thing consistently, I guarantee you complete and total healing. If you're on this channel, it means that you're in a lot of pain. Because why else would you watch these videos? Why else would you watch them? You're in a huge amount of pain. When you get into a romantic relationship with somebody who suffers from a cluster B personality disorder, once you get enmeshed with them, once that happens, it creates a trauma bond, a trauma loop that never goes away. Even if you get out of that relationship, even if you get out of that relationship and you marry a healthy person, the ongoing trauma loop inside of you never stops. Don't believe me? Tell me the truth. Even though you've been out of the relationship for years, you still sometimes wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night. You still sometimes think about him or her, and you pine over the times that they were giving you attention when they were love bombing you. You still have pain. You still think about them. You're either still angry about what they did to you, and you want them to pay for that. You want them to acknowledge what they did to you, or you're so filled with compassion, you cry over the thought of wishing you could go and heal them from their enormous pain. I know that was the kind of stuff that I thought. I'm not, I'm not hyperbolizing. If that's you and you're on this channel, then you are caught in a trauma loop that will not go away. And here's the worst part. Therapy won't fix it. I believe in therapy. I've been in therapy for 30, 35 years. I've been in 12-step recovery for 40 years. But therapy won't fix it either. Sorry. Medication won't fix it. Therapy won't fix it. Another relationship won't fix it. It's something that cannot be cured, except if you do the one thing. So before I get into asking the question, is there an easier way to heal from narcissistic abuse? Do I have to do the one thing? I first want to identify with you on the level of pain that you're experiencing. That black hole in the middle of your gut. That feeling of, you know, when I was with my borderline, I literally, there was never one moment where I wasn't constantly thinking about her in some way or other. Even when we were apart, I, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Looking back on it now, I was in a severe state of trauma. So if I can come along and say to you that I've done one thing which completely cured me completely and permanently from that pain, you would think that everybody else who's had that experience or is currently having it, you would think that they would be willing to do anything to be free of that pain. If you were broke and homeless and I came to you and I said, listen, I know how you can make a million dollars a year for the rest of your life, but you have to do this one thing for 10 minutes a day five days a week. You would be telling me, I don't care what it is. And I'd say, it's not that easy. To, I don't care. 10 minutes out of my day, a million dollars for the rest of my life. Tell me what it is. Well, you have to stand on your head in the corner 
uh, for 10 minutes a day, five days a week for the rest of your life, you'd be like, I'll do that. Even if I stop doing it, if I make a million dollars a year, if I do it for 20 years, I'll have, you know, $20 million left over and then I can just take it easy. I'm definitely going to stand on my head in the corner every day for 10 minutes. So why do you think it is that people ask these questions? Is there an easier way? Do I have to do that one thing? You would think that they really weren't in that much pain, but that's not the case. It's the most painful thing. I can't think of anything more painful than having been enmeshed with a borderline or a narcissist and, and living with that. I can't think of anything more, more traumatizing or painful. I can't think of one thing. And yet, this question, I get asked this question all the time. Is there an easier way? Is there some other way? Do I have to do that? Uh, you know, I hate doing this because I really don't want to, uh, I don't, I don't want to single anybody out and make anybody feel devalued. So I'm going to read a comment that uh, was left on the channel. And it's, it's a comment, uh, it's a question that I get all the time. And so I'm not going to name the person. This isn't about making the person look bad. If you're the person that asked this question, just know that I have nothing but love and compassion in my heart for you. But I want you to understand how badly damaged you are to even ask this question. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it because I, you know, I don't know how else to, to handle this other than that. This person says, Mike, thank you for all you're doing. Well, you're quite welcome. You say, as a codependent, I am wondering, hmm, I'm wondering whether there is an alternative to the CODA 12 steps, as I really do not like speaking in a public setting. Any suggestions would be greatly appreciated. Is it possible to still glean some of the benefits of the 12 steps if one diligently, all caps, goes it alone without a sponsor. So let's put that question into context. What is the name of this channel? The one thing that heals BPD and NPD abuse. How many videos on this channel are there? How many videos on this channel do I say that the only way to heal is to do the one thing. Even in the older videos, I used to say the four things, but what was happening is the one thing that actually does all the healing, people were doing three out of the four, but they weren't doing the one. So I changed the name to the one thing because it's true. That one thing is the only thing that will cure you. The other three things that I used to tell people when I told people to do four. The other three are really good suggestions that are sort of like vitamins that sort of help. But there's this one thing that will absolutely, utterly, and completely cure you. And so my, my first response to you is, in how many of the videos do I say anything that resembles anything that sounds like, well, listen, you know, this is what worked for me, but you know, maybe you can find a different way. You know, this isn't the only way. People used to say that in the beginning. They'd say, you know, your way isn't the only way. And I'd say, look, I, I don't care. If you find another way, my hat's, my hair's off to you. I don't have an ego attached to this. I'm just telling you from 40 years of experience watching this, I've only seen one way that people completely heal. And the sad part is, is that you can't get partially healed. You're either completely healed or you still suffer from this for the rest of your life. Those are your two choices. So that's my, no, you can believe me or disbelieve me. I honestly don't care. Your opinion of what I think has no bearing on the reality that I've completely healed myself of this. And uh, your opinion of me and what I say has no bearing on the fact that every single person who has followed my directions to the letter consistently has also had a complete, total, permanent healing. 
So this isn't about, you know, you know I'm being mean to you because I won't co-sign your opinion. You know, I, I, I don't need for this to be true. Literally, if somebody else can find another way to do it, by all means, go ahead. But I'm certain that you won't. So again, if you were broke and I said, all you have to do is stand on your head for 10 minutes a day, five days a week, you would get a million dollars a year. You would do it without complaining. So why are you trying to find a harder, difficult way to do things? I'm going to answer that question. It's because you have this thing called codependence. Now, you've been with somebody who had a mental illness. You've been with a borderline. You know that borderlines do really self-destructive things that don't make any sense whatsoever. And you can tell by looking at them, if they just allowed people to love them, they could be happy. They could have loving, healthy relationships, but they just can't let anybody love them. And they can't be loved without attacking and destroying you. They just can't do it. So it doesn't matter how many times you tell them, you know, if you finally realize they have this mental illness, you finally realize that uh, that, that's never going to stop. You know, unless they're one of the tiny few percentile of people who get the right kind of therapy and stay in it for 10 plus years. And even then it's iffy you realize that they're mentally ill and, and it's sad, but there's nothing you can say to them. So you're on kind of a spectrum here. If I'm telling you, there's a thing you can do which will completely and permanently cure you. It doesn't cost you anything. You can do it from home. You never have to leave. You can do it online. You don't have to buy anything. You can stop whenever you want. Nobody's forcing you to do it. And you don't want to do it? It means that you're terrified of being cured. And that is the same terror that borderlines and narcissists have. They could cure themselves if they could tolerate the negative feelings that went on in them while they took the actions in therapy that would allow them to shift their understanding of themselves in reality. But it's so painful for them and so frightening that they can't bring themselves to do it. And that's why we call it a mental illness, because they are no longer in control of their emotional reactions and their physical actions as a result of their emotional reactions. So if I give you something that is... I'm not asking you to stand on your head. I'm not asking you to do anything that is unrealistic for a human being to do. I'm asking you to either go online and go to an online Zoom meeting where, by the way, you can block your face out where nobody will hear you. You can hit mute where, I mean, where nobody will see you and hit mute where nobody will hear you. You can go to those meetings anonymously or you can sit in a room and sit in the back and not talk to anybody if you don't want. I'm asking you to be in a room with people or be in a, uh, a virtual room with other people. And you're telling me that that is so frightening to you that you would rather be in pain. You would rather be consumed by your fear and your pain. That is what you're telling me. And I can tell you that there are people that do that. There are people who keep coming onto my channel, who keep leaving uh, comments. Now, this person isn't one of those. I don't know who this person is, to be honest. But there are people who keep coming on the channel, watch the channel regularly, refuse to follow my suggestions, leave comments all the time, and refuse to do the work to heal. And that is an act of an insane person. That's what crazy people do. So I want to bring to your attention how crazy that question is. You ask, uh, uh, you want to know if there's an alternative to CODA 12 steps 
as I really do not like speaking in a public setting. When did I ever say, find the video where I say that what you have to do in order to heal is to speak in a public setting? Find it. Find the video where I tell you you have to do that. I never said that. I said, go to CODA and work the 12 steps. You can uh, let me repeat myself. You can go to an online Zoom CODA meeting where you block out your screen so nobody can see your face. You can hit the mute button so that nobody hears you. You can be a ghost and still go to a CODA meeting. So why are you asking me uh, about trying to avoid speaking in a public setting? I never said you had to do that. It's interesting that your brain came up with that. It tells me you've never been to a CODA meeting. So you're so afraid of the of the of CODA meetings that you've come up with this. This is your insanity. This is what a, this is the kind of thing a borderline would do. They would come up with some crazy scenario that doesn't exist and use it as a justification for why they're doing such crazy things. Are you a borderline? Are you mentally ill? Because that is the question of a mentally ill person. You've come onto the channel because it's like going into a doctor's office saying, I want to be healed of this life-threatening incurable illness. And the doctor says, great, stand on your head in the corner every day for 10 minutes. And he's given you the cure. And it would be like saying, well, you know, is there any way that I can glean some of the benefits without having to stand on my head? You ask this, you say, is it possible to glean some of the benefits if one diligently goes it alone without a sponsor? Why do you want some of the benefits? And what kind of an asshole would I be if I said to you, well, yeah, I mean, you can get some of the benefits. You'll never be cured. Your pain will never go away, but you'll get, you know, maybe a lessening of a couple of the symptoms. What kind of an asshole would I be if I gave that to you? So the one thing that you're trying to tell me, which again is insane, because it's not true. But one of the things you're trying to tell me is that you're trying to tell me that you are incapable of just doing a normal human thing, which is interacting with other humans. You really want me to believe that you're an adult who took care of a borderline for who knows how long. You met every single one of their needs. You gave away all of your boundaries. You allowed them to hurt you, to abuse you. You kept interacting with them and functioning beyond normal levels in order to keep the relationship going. And you really want me to believe that you're incapable of interacting with, with other human beings for an hour online or in a, a room full of people. You really want me to believe that if even if it were required of you, which it's not, it's not required, but if it were required for you once a week to speak for three minutes in front of a room with 10 other people, and if you did that, it would completely cure you of this incredibly debilitating pain. Are you really trying to tell me that you're incapable of that? If I believed you, if I took you at your word and I believed that that was true about you and I gave in to that request, what kind of an asshole would I be? It would mean that I looked down on you. It would mean that I saw you as less than human because I'm saying unless, you know, literally there's something like you're, you know, mentally retarded or something. There's really nothing that prevents you. And I know for a fact you do that because you go to work, you make a living, you, 
you're able to hold down a job. You can go to the grocery store. You can talk to people at restaurants. You can, you can interact with people. So this idea that you're incapable of communicating verbally to other people in your physical presence, what kind of an asshole would I be if I believed you? I'm not codependent. So as much as you want me to feel sorry for you and as much as you want me to believe that you are such a horrifically incapable subhuman that I got to find another way for you to heal, I'm not going to do that. But you see, that's not what you're telling me. Because one of the things that you will say is, no, I'm actually quite capable. I took care of this really screwed up person. I did things that most humans wouldn't be capable of doing. I lived the life of two people, not just one. So I'm beyond capable. I'm super capable. I'm a super empath. My cape is flapping in the wind as I fly down from heaven to save the poor, you know, screwed up borderline. So I don't buy it on the one hand. So then why would you come up with that? Because you're afraid. What are you afraid of? You're afraid of what will happen when you heal. This is important because I've made it clear. I've overstated the point here that, uh, that codependence um, will go out of their way to heal themselves from the thing that they say they want healing from the most, which means that there's something in it for you. There is something in it that keeps you in that. And what is that? It's real simple. Your mom and or your dad taught you that if you uh, don't allow yourself to be seen and loved, that they would approve of you. But if you have your feelings and you allow people to love you, they would throw you away. That was the message that you got. The message you got was that I have no value unless I only do what other people want. I have no value unless I do something that's outside of me, either the way that I look or what I say or what I do or how I meet your needs. I have no value outside of that. The message is, is that your value comes from what you do, not who you are. And when you go to these 12 step meetings, the message is the opposite and you can't tolerate that because it means if you accept that you are lovable, then your mommy and daddy in your head will reject you, which is the same thing that your borderline said to you. So the only reason you're asking me these ridiculous questions, is there any way I can work the steps without having to work the steps? Because that's what you asked me. The only reason you're asking that is because the truth is you're more attached to your pain than you are to the idea of healing. And that's why codependence is on the scale of a mental illness. It's not a mental illness, but people with codependence are attached to this. That's why it's called a disease. Now, this is why alcoholism was called a disease, even though it's not a physical disease, even though it's not a mental illness. It's why it's called disorder, right? they, why psychologists throw around the word disorder. You are disordered if you're a codependent because what you're asking makes absolutely no sense. And just to be clear, you say, is it possible to work the 12 steps of, without a sponsor? That's like saying, is it possible to play tennis without a tennis ball? No. Is it possible to ballroom dance without a partner? No. You're going to have to interact with another human being. You're going to have to get honest with another human being. You, didn't, you never had to get honest with your borderline. They're not interested in your real true self. You could hide behind being the perfect caretaker. You never had to show you. How do I know? Because I was one. It takes one to know one. The whole point of working the steps is working with another person 
who knows where you've been, who understands, who won't judge you. You can't do a fourth step alone. How are you gonna how are you gonna do a fifth step by yourself? Who are you gonna who are you gonna read your fifth step to? So come on, why are you asking me such ridiculous questions? The reason you're asking this question is because this you would have to face how severely damaged you've been as a result of this relationship. You would have to face your pain and your fear of being judged and rejected. You would have to, even worse than that, face the pain of being truly seen and truly loved by somebody who accepts you unconditionally and doesn't judge you. And that is more frightening to you than having a borderline destroy your life and feast on your entrails. So no, there isn't any other way out. This is the only way that I know. If you want complete and total healing, go to coda.org, C-O-D-A dot O-R-G. Go to an online Zoom meeting. You can blank your screen out and you can put on the mute, but the one thing you have to do is you have to get a sponsor. And you have to work the 12 steps with a sponsor. And that is the only way that I know that you can completely cure yourself. And here's the sad part. A lot of you won't do it. That's not my wish for you. I take no pleasure in saying that. I know how challenging it is. But I'm willing to bet the majority of you won't do it. You're going to maybe try and do it like you. You want to sort of half-ass do it. Is there a way that I can get some of the benefits? That's like saying, can you, you know, asking the doctor who's going to cut out, you know, a giant cancerous tumor. It's like asking, can you only take out half of the tumor? It's a meaningless thing. It means nothing. Glean some of the benefits means it's meaningless. Why do you hate yourself so much that you don't want a complete cure? I know why. Because you're codependent. Because you were trained that way by your primary caretakers and you were with your borderline who kept teaching that to you and it made you feel valuable. And that's bonkers. So just like you would tell your borderline girlfriend, no, you have to go to therapy. You have to get the healing that you deserve. You have to be, you, you deserve to be completely free of this thing called BPD. Why would I want you to be partially cured of BPD? I want you to be completely happy. Well, this is your choice. You can either do the one thing and heal, or you can skimp and do it half-assed. You can glean some of the benefits and you will never heal. That is my experience. Believe me or don't, I don't care. My personal experience and my observation uh, is not something that is up for debate. But you won't know until you do it. And here's the thing, you know, what, what's the worst that could happen? You go and speak in front of people. You would learn how to have confidence if you're really, you're saying the only thing is I just don't want to speak in front of people. Well, the worst thing that would happen for you is you would get some self-confidence by learning how to speak in front of people. And how is that a bad thing? There's nothing, nothing, there's nothing about following my suggestions that will harm you in any way, even if what I'm saying is completely false. There is nothing you would lose. The 12 steps will only help you. There's nothing damaging about them. Why would you deny yourself the thing you need the most? It makes no sense. So it is scary, and uh, the only way out is through, and no. You can't skimp if you want to get cured. You're free to do whatever you want, but you're going to get the results of that. And you can remember what I told you. You can do it half-assed. You can half-ass it any way you want. You can do it partially any way you want. You're free to do whatever you want. I don't have the power to command you, nor would I, nor does anybody else in CODA. But you can do whatever you want, and in five years you can look back and you can realize that you're still in pain. You might have muted some of the symptoms because maybe you went to therapy. Maybe time is sort of kind of kind of muted it, but then you're, you're still going to wake up in the middle of the night. You're still going to, to think about them. You're still going to be obsessed with them. Even if you get 
you know, one guy was married and I had to block him, but he kept on saying, I'm married with a woman that loves me for years. How do I stop thinking about my borderline ex? And I said, real simple, work the steps. He said, I'm not going to do that. Tell me something else. So getting married isn't going to fix it. Nothing's going to fix it. But if you work all 12 steps with a sponsor, I challenge you to come back and tell me that it didn't work. I challenge you. That hasn't happened yet. Not one person has come back and said, I worked all 12 steps in Coda with a sponsor like you suggested, and I'm as fucked up as I was before. Nobody's ever said that. In fact, everybody has said the opposite. Thank you, Mike, so much for telling me what to do. My life is so much better. I don't even think about her anymore. Like me. I can't even remember her name. Uh, uh, okay, it took me that long to remember her name. Do you want to be like me? If you want what I have, you got to do what I do. Value yourself and love yourself enough to stop asking these self-devaluing questions. Don't try and manipulate people like me that are trying to help you. Because you are. You're trying to manipulate me into feeling sorry for you and saying, oh, that poor stupid schmuck, he'll never get it. Yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. Just do it half ass You'll be all right. I care about you too much to lie to you or to give you less. But it's up to you if you want to do it half-assed, you can do it, and you can then tell us later what happened. We will all be able to guess. That's it for me, guys. Every now and then, new people come to the channel, and every now and then, I have to repeat myself just to keep it fresh. So if you want to learn what I did to heal, you can get my book, How I Survived My Borderline Girlfriend, on Amazon, Kindle, or Audible. Or you can go and watch the the video on this channel, which is on the, the channel page, the one thing that heals BPD and NPD abuse, follow my directions to the letter. You're perfectly capable of doing it. It's a lot easier than standing on your head for 10 minutes a day, five days a week. If you do it, I guarantee you results. If you don't, I guarantee you won't get results. And what's easier than that? It's simple. That's it. Uh, see you guys maybe in another couple of years or something. Take good care of yourselves.